Today we're going to talk about dealing with shade in a warm season lawn like zoysia grass, Bermuda grass, centipede, possibly even St. Augustine, which I have no experience with. But it's even more shade tolerant than the first three. And I'm sitting here looking at my neighbor's yard across the road and it's on fire. It looks good. So good job, Ron. Looking good. All right. We are going to talk about the first step in dealing with a shady problem or a shady area and growing it in. What's the best thing you can do? Well, number one, we need to figure out where the shade's coming from. In my case, it is a tree or a lot of trees. If it's a home or fence or building, of course you can't do anything with it. Except possibly a few things that we're going to talk about later on but first we're going to talk about trees dealing with trees the only thing we can really do is open up the canopy and improve that light penetration to the ground that's the only thing that's gonna improve photosynthesis and encourage the plant to grow or that is at least the number one thing and we're going to talk about what i've done here in this canopy all right so you can see the spot behind me how dry it looks and it's mainly a shade issue, but it is dry. So when you're dealing with trees, not only do you have a shade problem to deal with, but you're also dealing with competition in nutrients and moisture in the soil. So these tree roots are gonna outcompete turf roots almost any day of the week. These trees can dig deeper, grow further and faster um, than a turf root probably can. That means it's gonna get first pick over um, moisture and nutrients dealing with that we're gonna walk over here and see how the shady lane looks hang on extremely windy today and I'm trying to find places like next to this big pine tree here where I can get my microphone microphone out of the wind but you can see behind me where I have hit those particular poplar trees and right here uh, are some white oak limbs. These aren't big ones, but I'm hoping you can see what I've done in the shady lane behind me. Let's go take a look at that. All right, I'm just a few feet away from where I was a moment ago, but I'm on the ditch bank here in my front yard next to the road, and you can see above me that the canopy is much more open than it was before. I still have this white oak here that is kind of thick up top, but we're just going to do the best we can with what we have and see how it goes from here. Hang on, we're going to show you a little bit more of the lemming, and then we're going to talk about some things that you can do to further improve your shade problem. No, not further improve your problem, further improve what you can do to mitigate this problem. Hang on. I'm hoping you can see the canopy behind me. Though it is still thick on that line, um, it is much more open now and basically I got the low hanging fruit on this. So the lower limbs, the bigger stuff, what I could reach, all got cut. So I still have a few more around the yard that I'm gonna touch up when I can. All right, as you can see, I have really done a number on the amount of limbs that I have cut. If this doesn't help light penetration, there's not much else I can do. So if you have improved your light penetration the best you can, let's talk about some more things that we can do. All right, I got some information here after I've gone back and looked at my footage and I feel like I need to add a little information for you and that is step number one you have to have light penetration and you have to have a minimum amount of light for your grass to thrive and live period step number two is NPK that's gonna be your fertilization program you have to have a solid fertilization program for your grass to grow. Now, you need to formulate that plan by uh, a soil test, 
otherwise you don't really know what you need to apply so I highly encourage a soil test and make your fertility plan according to your soil test results all right so I want to preface the rest of the information in this video with this statement by trimming your trees or moving trees or whatever you have to do to increase your light penetration if you do not have the minimum required amount of sunlight the rest of this will not help so first and foremost sunlight number two your NPK program and everything else I'm gonna mention in this video is not necessarily going to help your grass grow in the shade but will help your grass compete with tree roots or help you improve your soil or the way that water nutrients and air can get down into the root zone and give your turf the push it needs in order to grow. So biostimulants help, um, aeration and other cultural practices that you do may help. Sunlight, MPK, and then the rest is a bonus only after you have achieved the minimum required amount of sunlight. So if you cannot get that sunlight to the minimum required amount for whatever your cultivar says you need, the rest of this is for nothing. I needed to stress that importance. The next step I would take is either a core aeration or a liquid aeration and open the ground up because if you have tree roots and grass roots that are competing it's probably going to be compacted soil. It's going to be really dry and hard. And this will open it up for air and water penetration. And we know that a healthier root is going to lead to a healthier grass plant. So we're going to do everything we can do to improve the grass quality and shade. We have some aerate and some RGS. So this is a liquid aeration product. It's going to go down into the soil and just help open it up a little bit, create micro fissures in the soil to increase that air and water penetration. The RGS is the root growth stimulant that has sea kelp and humic acid in it. And that's gonna go down, break bonds in the soil and the space that's created with this product, um, this product here will encourage more root growth to fill in those open voids. So I'm on a bi-weekly regimen of the RGS, and so far this year I've put out one application of Air 8. And I plan on doing it maybe monthly, maybe every three weeks, depending on how moist the soil is and how hard it may be to get it watered in. I have a couple other options here that we can talk about, and it still has to pertain with root growth. The next thing we have to encourage more root growth is the enzymatic hydrolysis derived peptides. Keep in mind the peptide is derived from the soy plant, soybean plant, and they uh, extracted this specific chain of amino acids that encourages root hair growth so this will increase root density um, the more root you have once again the better your plant will be in the shade I'm on a bi-weekly regimen of the subvert depth 10 at the minimum rate of 0.75 ounces per thousand square feet now this company makes many different flavors of the peptide products with different NP and K micronutrients and other things that they have in them at different um, different levels different quantities inside the jug 
and I'm going to be trying out probably the dip MFT which has the most amount of peptides in it and I think it has some other goodies as well and we'll cover that when the time comes but that is one thing that I use to get more root growth for growing in a shadier area is a plant growth regulator now a plant growth regulator is a gibberellin inhibitor and gibberellin is um, the hormone that is responsible for cell elongation so PGR was really created for like golf courses and sports turfs to reduce the amount of top growth the plant has and that's what it does but a huge side benefit of less top growth is that the plant will focus on bottom growth the plant will be much more compact it'll be more dense it'll have better color it'll have a whole lot more root growth much more dense roots and it also promotes lateral growth of the plant um, studies have shown that applying a PGR in shade or in a shaded turf will improve the quality and density of that turf so zoysia grass gets T-nex at about a quarter of an ounce per thousand square feet every 255 growing degree days and that's a mathematical formula um, you can go to a website I think Syngenta Greencast has the growing degree days per zip code uh, for example, yesterday was warm and I had 21.5 growing degree days just yesterday alone. So you can see how the weather affects that value and how it adds up pretty quick. So the cooler it is, the smaller the GDD is, the warmer it is, the higher it'll be. And the growing degree day was a formula that was calculated to um, determine the length of effectiveness of the plant growth regulator so that's how that works so it has a certain amount of control uh, for a time period and that's the best they came up with so I reapply this every 255 growing degree days this one is Tnex it is a uh, specific brand of Trinexapac ethyl you can find it also labeled as Primo Max and I think there's a couple other off brands but it's all the same active ingredient and it all works the same. Next thing we talked about was hydrotane. So hydrotane is a humectant. It uh, has a soil penetrant in it so you apply it to moist soil, water it down to the root zone where it stays and it attracts moisture. That's going to help keep your shaded grass in a better position to stay green, lush, and healthy. Still have a couple more tricks up our sleeve. Once you core aerate, you can top dress with a sandy material, a, a loose type sandy material, or a real loose fine compost, and that will uh, help to insulate the ground uh, as far as moisture is concerned, it'll help retain a little bit of moisture and the dark material will also apply heat to the area which encourages more growth in warm season grass. The last thing I can come up with is if your grass is really struggling in a shady area and you can't open up the tree canopy at all, one thing you can do is to find a cultivar of grass that is more shade tolerant than what you have. That could be via sod or that could be via plugs. These are some El Toro soja plugs that I've grown here in the backyard. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of these plugs and put them in these bare areas and show you how they differ over time versus a less shade tolerant cultivar. So let's go get these here and put them in the ground.
these have not matured yet I still have a lot of root growth to go but I see some good rhizomes here and some, some good root here So, we're going to keep an eye on these plugs and see how they progress versus what's already here that's been established but is suffering through a lot of drought right now which is being robbed by the tree roots and the shade is suppressing the growth as well. So, we're going to check it out and see what happens. Time for me to go put some RGS on the yard, and I might as well go ahead and put some air 8 with it. Catch you guys next week.